we pulled into this spot out here in the National Forest just outside of Ridgeway uh, last night. Just sitting out here this morning, having our coffee, enjoying our view, and this super random cow just comes wandering through, crying like she's lost her herd. She just passes on by. Ridgeway for about one week waiting on some mail. Well, it's supposed to arrive this afternoon. So today we're packing up and heading back into town. The only problem is that the road leading out of here has a really deep rut that gave us some issues coming in. But Nick Giver is an experienced four-wheel problem solver. So he's dragging down trees to the troublesome location to fill in the deep portion, creating a makeshift ramp to level our drive out of here Reducing the harsh stress on our camper at this spot. Just don't pass on Stay tuned to see if our tree ramp works and we get out of here. Wherever I go, I will always know. Everything I need is right here with me. It's time to let it all go, no matter who knows. Anything about me now. I'm ready to see what life's got for me. I got one thing left to say. Overlanding is full of trials and tribulations. The struggles are seemingly endless throughout the mountains and valleys, beaches and deserts. It is in these moments that we have the opportunity to see what we are truly capable of. Then suddenly, the obstacle is overcome and we reach out and grab the prize. But I'm not sure which prize is greater. The view on the other side, or the memory of what we went through to get there. Maybe that's the whole point of the journey, and the reason we keep pressing forward. Morning. Last night we stayed the night at the Confluence Park in Delta, Colorado. It's between Ridgeway and Grand Junction off of, I believe, Highway 50. Um, it's a really nice park here. They've got a little bit of everything. They even have 110 and 50 hookups near the pavilion that doesn't seem anybody minds that we're using. There's several clean restrooms throughout the park. A little fishing pond out back that looks stocked full of fish, historical center, free RV dump, which is awesome. Great walking trailer, running trail around the park. There's a little bike park out back, a little skate park. There's a dog park, tennis court. They've got a little bit of everything. It's great here. And the only downside is, is we can't find potable water here. Other than that, it's a great spot for a night or two. Today, the weather is beautiful. So we're on our way to Grand Junction today to get a new tire. We got a little snag inside of our tires, so we're gonna replace that today. Yeah, Confluence Park. 
great spot for a night or just a free dump. So the last dump was $28. This one's free, so that kind of offsets the cost a little bit. So that makes me feel better. Thank you, Delta, for having a free dump. I appreciate that. The nice thing about having a truck camper is we can take the camper off and I can do laundry today and Nick can go get his tire at the same time. So that's what we're doing right now. We went to do laundry and the woman working the counter said she had one large washing machine for $8. Amazing! Through all my stuff, sheets, all Nick's clothes, my clothes, they all fit in one washer. Turns out two hours later, it's still spinning and washing the clothes and I'm thinking, something's so wrong here. It said 45 minutes, went back in at 45 minutes, said 14 minutes left. Figured, okay, that's the rinse cycle. Turns out the valve got stuck open. The owner just pulled a rusty nail out of the valve. <laughs> and so it's just been trying to fill for two hours. We've actually been here at two and a half hours now and it just moved all of our clothes to another washing machine it's got to rewash everything and then we can spin it and dry it so the owner is really nice he's super apologetic but it's very time consuming i thought this was going to be the quickest laundry we've ever done nope and it's 97 degrees outside so you saw nick drop the camper off for me so Trixie and I have been sitting in this camper without AC. It's been super hot. We went outside a few times. It's ridiculous. So when Nick came back with the truck, we plugged into the outlet outside the laundromat. The owner okayed it, and now we've got the AC running, but it's gonna take a while to cool it down in here. So we've got another maybe hour, hour and a half left to do laundry. <laughs> I hope you're enjoying the video so far. Please click that like button, subscribe if you haven't already subscribed, and click the little bell. It'll give you a reminder to uh, watch the video when it comes out next Tuesday. And when you like and subscribe to our channel and you click the bell, it really helps the YouTube algorithm grow our channel, which is what we're looking for. So if you're doing that, I really appreciate you. Thank you. Please enjoy the rest of the video. So this morning I woke up to a big old pile of uh, digested dog food. <laughs> Fortunately, I think Trixie was not feeling so good last night. She got up in the middle of the night and puked on the carpet. I didn't notice, so I figured it out this morning. Luckily, I didn't step in it. The nice part about this camper is the carpet does come out and underneath is linoleum. So no damage, no harm, no foul. We're over here at Barney Brothers. 4x4, four four. they're letting me use their hose to uh, clean the carpet. <laughs> so we got some vinegar and baking soda, and we're gonna get this thing spick and spin. Meanwhile, these guys are fixing my transmission mount, and they let us plug into their shop, so we're gonna have air conditioning today. What a wonderful group of guys. I am so appreciative of these guys. If you're watching this, you guys are lifesavers. Thank you, thank you very much. All right, so we finally got our cleaned carpet back in our camper, and I have to say it's as clean as it's ever been. We have tried to get stains out and all the dog hair, but we've never had a pressure washer, so that was amazing to be able to blast all of that dirt out of there. Thank you guys out at Barney's. When we were in Durango, I noticed that the transmission mount had broken and I didn't have any way to fix it and it seemed to be holding up. It was broken on one side, so there's two points where there's bolts 
and it had snapped on one side so it was still being held on by this side it held up pretty well it's in a whole tunnel in there so even if it moved a little bit there was a bunch of metal around it that was going to keep it where it was at so i felt that it was okay to continue we ended up going to silverton and doing all the off-roading that we did there and we went to telluride and did all the off-roading that we did there which was quite a bit so babe has been doing a great job for us uh, we have quite literally put her through hell over the last month and a week i would say Basically, ever since Lake Powell, we have been beating on this truck pretty hard. We pulled so many people out of the sand, like seven or eight people we pulled out of the sand in Lake Powell. That's not easy on anything. I think that's where our transmission mount broke. While we were in Telluride, I actually noticed that after going up the Imogene Pass, we had sliced the sidewall of our back tire and exposed a some sort of a white membrane it was in front of the cords. It was like a really slippery membrane. I was really impressed that it didn't cut all the way through the tire because those were some very sharp rocks. Swapped out the spare tire at that point and we rode the spare tire from Telluride all the way to here in Grand Junction. Grand Junction's a big old town, so I knew that we would have everything we needed in Grand Junction. So I was planning on getting the transmission mount repaired here in Grand Junction and I was planning on getting the tire fixed, so I went ahead and called a week ahead of time while we were still in Telluride, I think, and had the tires ordered. I had two tires waiting for me when we arrived here in Grand Junction so that I could replace both the tires at the same time so that we would be fresh on both sides. While all that was going on, I took the truck over to uh, Barney Brothers. Barney Brothers is a great off-road shop for people like us that are on the road or somebody that wants to build a very custom Jeep or anything like that. They really know how to do everything. And so we rolled into their shop. They actually had a three week backlog of work that they were doing and they managed to get us in that day. And they, like I was talking to them and they were like, well, let me look at what's going on. And they lifted up on the rack and, and they're like, oh yeah, we can do that real quick. We'll get you in this, you know, we'll start working on it right now. I was like, well, geez, you know, my wife's doing laundry across town and I left the the camper, you know, if something happens, you know, and it takes longer than you expect, I'm going to be kind of screwed. So let me go handle my stuff. I'll come back tomorrow. They actually let us stay the night in their yard, which was incredible. We were right there in the morning, ready to go. Awesome. So thank you guys very much for that. The next day they, they lifted up on the rack, got to work right away on the transmission mount, made it a lot stronger. Cause one of the things I believe in, if something breaks, make it stronger, because if you don't, it'll probably break again. Dual plates, huh? Dual plates. I'll cut out, roll it up. These were loose too when they took it apart. Oh, you're kidding, man. Yeah. That Cummins, man, it rattles everything loose. I am so happy I came here. So what was the reason you welded those two plates together? Was it just because you didn't have any metal thick enough or is that stronger that way? Well, it's gonna be a lot stronger that way. Yeah? Plus that upper one, the top one is the original plate. I straightened it and then it had those cutouts in it, and that's where the weak point was. That's where they both broke. Oh. You can see this one looked like it broke at one time, or they welded it too. Huh. This is a solid plate on the bottom. The only yeah. Thing I drilled was the two holes for the mounts on it. Okay. So it's the same thickness as the top one. It's just all welded together. Two of them now. Yeah. Two of them, and you don't have the gap in there in between that to break off. Sweet. So I know you guys are busy. I don't want to take up too much of your time, but anything you see, man, I need. While it was up on the rack, I told the mechanic, if you happen to see anything at all, please address it. And he did. He, he actually found my bed mounts on the front were broken. I believe that that probably happened in Ridgeway when we were doing all those twisty, rutted out roads with the camper, all that weight on there, something had to give. So, <laughs> but it's all good because the torque lift frame mounted tie downs that I have also connect to the bed. So they were holding the bed down. So no harm, no foul. They, they welded everything up. They braced it, made it stronger and sent us on our way. Hello, good afternoon. So we are at the Colorado River State Park. We had a bit of a snafu, a wrench in our plans, if you will. We ordered some tires at the Discount Tire over here. Um, I've been doing business with them for a long time. 
ordered our BFG KO2s. They've done us really well. Unfortunately, one of the tires that we ordered has a defect. I drove away, didn't even notice, and then we were looking at the tires and realized one of the tires has a bubble in it this big. So that's not good. So I brought it back. Closest replacement is in San Antonio, Texas. We ain't driving out there on that tire, that's for sure. So went ahead and ordered the new tire. Unfortunately, we gotta wait till the 17th to get it. We're stuck here for a while. Rather than uh, trying to save money by using BLM land and all that stuff, uh, we decided instead to go ahead and bite the bullet and call it an hour partying cost to go here at the state park. It's uh, roughly $42 a night. Actually, it's $36 a night if you have an annual state park pass here in Colorado, which we did not. We do now though. So the state park pass is $80. We were able to get a campsite, uh, first come first serve in the group camping area. They have 30 amp. There's no septic here. Uh, we have to move to the dump to dump and then we can come back. But there is 30 amp and water. It's uh, reaching 100 degree temperatures in the daytime. So we felt the air conditioning was very important right now. Now we're just waiting on tires. We've been having a lot of fun here in Fruta. What a wonderful place. Sometimes things are just meant to be. We were planning on going towards Aspen after this and we would totally miss this place. The tires taking longer than, they, than we expected them to allowed us to stay here a little bit longer and explore the town. I'm glad we did. That's what's going on. We're, uh, we're taking a bad situation and trying to make it good as we can because that's what we do. We're the Suttons and this is destination now. We're out here to have fun. Things are gonna happen. And the way I look at it, rather than getting all down, it's just a challenge. And we're out here to have fun. So I don't let that kind of stuff get me down. I am staring at a gorgeous view right now. When things like this happen, I just look for things to be thankful about. I resort to gratitude. Gratitude always brings me back to a place of happiness. No matter how tough life gets, no matter how hard it is, I always come back to a source of gratitude. I'm very thankful for this camper. I'm thankful for our beautiful, wonderful truck that's carried us this far. I'm thankful for this wonderful campground, this wonderful state park and view that we're looking at right now. I'm listening to the crickets chirp in the background. We've got our rig all set up. I mean, this is cool, man. I'm really enjoying this. I'm grateful that we were actually able to get a spot at the last minute like this. Things are working out. Luck is on our side. Thanks for tuning in. We got time, but no money. But there ain't nobody stopping us We got bills, but no dollars But now we don't really give up No, we don't really give up Living for that ray of light Life can be beautiful We're out here taking our evening stroll around the Colorado State Park with Trixie Just enjoying the sun setting and settling in for the night When things go wrong, take a moment to be thankful for the many things that are going right. For it's the hard times that are often blessings in disguise. Let go and let life strengthen you. No matter how much it hurts, hold your head up high and keep going. This is an important lesson to remember when you're having a rough day, a bad month, or a crappy year. Truth be told, sometimes the hardest lessons to learn are the ones your spirit needs the most. Your past was never a mistake if you learned from it. So take all the crazy experiences and lessons and place them in a box labeled thank you. We're pretty lucky out here. Our camping spot has not only this beautiful lake for us to look at every night, but it also has this great walking trail out here right on the Colorado River. It's got the lake on one side and the river on the other. It's a nice peaceful walk out here. See you guys later. Thanks for watching. You want to help show some support to our channel? Go ahead, hit that like button, subscribe, and ring the little bell. Every click really helps us out. 
helps us keep creating content for you. Thanks for watching today. We'll see you next Tuesday. Stay tuned next week as we explore Fruita.